Go on. Guru Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, which verse? Madhya Lila 122. Madhya Lila chapter. Let me see what chapter is it? Chapter 11, I think. Maybe not. No, chapter 22. Uh, chapter 22. Chapter 22, verse 111. Let's see if that's the verse. I think it is. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutari Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam Bande Ham Shiguro Shi Yata Padakamalam Shiguru and Vaishnavams Cha. That's not the verse. Try uh, Madhya Lila uh, 11 122. <laughs> Dati kam padati kam bande ham shi guru shi yata padai kamalam shi guru vaishnavam scha shi rupam sa guja tam sa haganad lalita shri visha kam vitam scha e krishna karuna sindhu dina bandhu jagat pate gopesha gopika kanta radhakanta namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Suri Vrishabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye. Now try uh, Madhya Leela chapter 14, verse number 1. Panchakalpa Taru Vescha Kripa Sindhu Vevacha Padita Ram Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Vavaho Namaha. Try Madhya Lila, no, I'm sorry, uh, Adi Lila, chapter 14, verse number one. Adi Lila. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare. So if you're wondering why all the confusion, I'm at a summer camp in Bosnia somewhere in the woods. And uh, we don't have good internet, nor do we have any books here. <laughs> so please uh, excuse all the imperfections. Antachana smitam yasmin duskaram sukaram bhavit vishmrite viparitam syat sri chaitanyam namamitam Translation, things that are very difficult to, to do becomes easy to execute if one somehow or other simply remembers Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But if one does not remember him, even the easy things become very difficult. To this Lord Chaitanya, I offer my respectful obeisances. Hmm. Report. In the book, Chaitanya Chandramita, Srila Prabhupada Saraswati says, one who receives a little favor from the Lord becomes so exalted he does not care even for liberation, which is sought after by many great scholars and philosophers. Some of the devotee of Lord Chaitanya considers residence in the higher planets a will of the whisk. He surpasses the perfection of mystic yogi power because for him the senses are like snakes with broken fangs. A snake is a very fearful and dangerous animal because of his poison fangs. If these fangs are broken, the appearance of the snake is no cause for fear. The yoga principles are meant to control the senses, but there is no scope for the senses of one engaged in the service of the Lord to be dangerous like snakes. These are the gifts of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Hari Bhakti Vilas confirms that difficult things become easy to understand if one remembers Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and easy things become very difficult to understand if one forgets him. 
In fact, actually, we see that even those who are very great scientists in the eyes of general public cannot understand the very simple idea that life comes from life because they do not have the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They defend the false understanding that life comes from matter, although they cannot prove that this is a fact. Modern civilization, therefore, prog progressing on the basis of this false scientific theory, is simply creating problems to be solved by the so-called scientists. The author of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu takes shelter of Lord Chaitanya to describe the pastimes of his appearance as a child, because one cannot write such transcendental literature by mental speculation. One who writes about the Supreme Personality of Godhead must be especially favored by the Lord. Simply by academic qualification, it is not possible to write such transcendental literature. So here, this is special mercy in this age of Kali. This listen, Kalir Dosha Nidhi Raja in this age is full of faults. It's like an ocean of faults. There's so many defects. In this age, memory goes down. In this age, bodily strength is reduced. In this age, uh, duration of life re is reduced. In this age, mercy, people uh, feeling mercy towards others that is also we do so all of these things. There are eight things. These are four that I can recall. This is the quality of this age. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, has appeared in this age. Wherever there is the greatest need, there is the greatest mercy. This is which we should understand. Wherever this is the nature of the Lord. When the need is great, the mercy is greater. So in this age, people need mercy, a lot of mercy. And that mercy is coming causelessly. Causeless needs means no one earned the mercy, but it's coming anyway. By Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So here is an interesting uh, principle that he's saying that uh, if you remember me, difficult things become easy to do. And by forgetting me, forgetting me, even easy things become very difficult. This is from Shastra, and this is a special concession of the Lord. So we might think, well, that's nice, and therefore I just, if I want anything I want to execute, anything I want to successfully execute, comes by way of the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and that is correct. But to remember Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is it's actually a lot easier to remember Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu than it is to remember Krishna. Although Krishna is, uh, although Lord Chaitanya is Krishna, in his form as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is in, in the Namo Mahavadanaya. He is especially kind and merciful in this fallen age. Um, simply by remember Goranga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, various names of the personality who's appeared in this world, then one can successfully execute devotional service. And one can also remember what to do when it's time to do whatever we need to do at that time. But this is the special mercy of Mahaprabhu. He's very kind. Uh, and therefore, we should take advantage of that in our devotional life or in general to always remember the Lord. Lord um, Chaitanya is so merciful that Prabhupada was asked a question by one book distributor lady. She said that uh, we understand, Srila Prabhupada, that at the time of death, we have to remember the Supreme Lord in order to go back the spiritual world. But sometimes we are out on book distribution and we're distributing the books and we don't remember the Lord. We are engaged in distributing books. And if we were to die at that time, then what would be our situation? Prabhupada answered nicely. He said, uh, he said, if you're distributing books and you somehow or other have to leave the body at that time, 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will force his memory into your consciousness. Now, that's not some nice statement to make someone feel good. This is actually a reality. How merciful Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is and how wonderful it is that when one is engaged in devotional service, especially preaching Krishna consciousness, then even if they forget the Lord and some calamity appears, then the Lord will help them to remember automatically. That is the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Prabhupada said, I'll make an experiment and try to understand how merciful he is. And do whatever you can to understand that mercy through your intellect, through your experience, through reading books. In other words, from all angles of vision, or all angles of approach, try to remember how merciful Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is. And Prabhupada says you will never understand that. It's not possible to understand his mercy. And then we have the example of Jagai and Madai, who were two Dakoites, who were very, very sinful. They had committed so many sins. Their sins were being calculated by Yamaraj's secretary, Chandragupta who, when he was calculating the sins of Jagai and Madai, he had to enlist another 30 scribes to continue writing down their sinful activities. And they were working overtime to keep up with it. So in this particular expression, we find that these personalities were so sinful that they couldn't even keep account of his sinful life. Hmm. So this is the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's made it easy. He's saving the Jagais and Madais. In this age, there are so many Jagais and Madais. But um, therefore, if we simply remember Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then this is the execution of devotional service becomes easy. Now, another aspect of this is the senses are compared to serpents. In fact, Prabhupada says if senses are like serpents or servants, mm -hmm. words are very similar. Serpent is one who bites and causes death, and servant is one who assists the master. So making the senses one servants and changing in them from serpents is the process of Krishna consciousness. The senses can be very unruly, especially in the association of sense objects, and especially in the association of powerful sense objects, like the opposite sex. And then the senses become more difficult to control. But it says that I remember Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the snake of death. Death means in the sense that one's spiritual life becomes damaged or even destroyed temporarily. Um, then that same snake has no effect. The poison fangs are destroyed. Well, even in the appearance of sense objects that are very, what we say, powerful, one will not be disturbed. One will not be disturbed. So this is the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this verse, it's also mentioned in Hari Bhakti Vilas by Sanatana Goswami, who, which was written under the direction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that this is the manifestation of mercy in this age. And of course, the Lord provides the ultimate principle of mercy, and that is the chant. A Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which is Lord Chaitanya's special gift to the world. He came with that mercy. Goloka Prema Dan Harinam Samkirtan Ratin Jan Milokene Upai. It's coming from the spiritual world itself and it's being brought by the Lord. If something descends on its own merit, that's one thing. But if something is carried by a great personality, the Lord Himself, 
then you can understand that that gift is very special. So the Lord brought it and he showed it. He practiced it. He delivered it. He uh, uh, made it the number one activity within the Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And we study the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was always dancing, dancing in Kirtan. That was his mood to dance when the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Today we were we were at one particular place in the mountains of uh, of Bosnia, just outside of the city of Sarajevo. And we're here on a retreat with many devotees from the area and others coming. So today we went into town and there's a very special place that is very famous in this area and also throughout the, the surrounding countries also. It's called the, uh, the uh, pyramids. And these are pyramids that nobody knows the origin of. They were built even before anyone could trace back how far back. And they have all these tunnels that connect these pyramids underground. So it becomes a tourist attraction. So we went to that area and there's places where people congregate and a lot of them are outdoor little amphitheaters. So we came with about 25 to 30 devotees and we did kirtan today and various devotees were taking kirtan and then the kirtan became very enthusiastic and the dad devotees got up to dance. And when the devotees got up to dance, of course, there were so many guests and pilgrims and people coming. So they also started to come with their cameras and start taking pictures. But that wasn't enough for them. The kirtan was so enthusiastic that many of them started to come and dance in the kirtan. And then we had actually a, a, a huge circle of people coming from the outside, just dancing and dancing and dancing. And they made, you know, they were so enthusiastic and they were all smiling, just feeling happy. I'm not sure they knew why they were happy, but they were happy. They were dancing, taking pictures, smiling. We were, they were, we were passing out prasadam. So it was a very interesting, this is Lord Chaitanya's mercy, how he arranges for the devotees to be at a place where people come. And then by that arrangement, he also inspires people to come and take part in the kirtan and to receive Krishna prasadam and a nice experience. So that's Lord Chaitanya's mercy. So um, getting out and doing kirtan to the public, especially during these summer months, is just a wonderful opportunity to spread Krishna consciousness. Uh, and this will please Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very, very much. Because if he, when he sees that the devotees are making an effort to bring more spirit souls into Krishna consciousness, the Lord showers his blessings upon the devotees more and more and more. And the enthusiasm we saw from the non-devotees today even seemed to excel the enthusiasm of the devotees. <laughs> it was just quite amazing to watch. We were watching and taking part in it at the same time. So this is Lord Chaitanya's mercy that he's uh, every town and village, he wants to see the Sankirtan movement spread that every town and village of the world, my name will be chanted. So one should not become overwhelmed with whatever material situation is permeating the world now. Material world is always a miserable place. There's always politics. There's always disease. There's always what do you call it? So many calamities. It's just one after another. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement is a bright light within this dark age of Kali to uh, shine what is real, real life and what is how, can how one can live life in a very joyful way. 
and the devotees have it, we have it. We shouldn't lock it away and keep it for ourselves. That is, uh, if you get a, the, the principle of, of, of a human being is that when they get something that makes them happy, they want to share it with others. They want to share Lord Chaitanya's mercy. And the mercy is so profuse that when you give it, you get more. In the material world, if you have something, say money, and you spend it, it becomes less as you spend it. And at one point, there's no more. But Lord Chaitanya's mercy is, it's the opposite. The more you give it, the more it grows. Lord Chaitanya is, actually mentions in um, the Chaitanya Charitamrita in the ninth chapter of Adi Lila, he says, he says, I have a storehouse, storehouse, a huge storehouse full of sweet, juicy fruit. And this fruit is so nice. I am tasting this fruit. And I'm finding this fruit is so sweet, but I want to deliver this fruit to everyone and anyone. But I'm only one person. This is Lord Chaitanya. I'm only one person. How much can I deliver? So please come, taste, taste these fruits yourself and then become a merchant and distribute it everywhere. And people will be eager to accept your fruit when they see, oh, how happy you are when you are in Krishna consciousness. Our own happiness is one of the best ways to, to, pre, to preach Krishna consciousness. Uh, on that note, I remember when I first joined the Hare Krishna movement back in 1972, it was. Um, I was going to New York Temple and I was being invited by people who I know to come and experience something spiritual. So I came. But the, one of the things that I noticed the most, besides, you know, what was everything that was going on, is that devotees were so happy. I never saw people like that. They were just naturally happy and they were happy to meet you, even if they didn't know you. <laughs> and they were they were engaging us in doing various spiritual activities. So um, the happiness of these devotees was very, what we say, attractive. And so I, we were thinking, at least I was thinking, boy, I want some of that happiness. <laughs> they got something. So this is our Krishna conscious movement. And chant, chant and dance, this is the way to become happy. When you chant and dance, gather the devotees together, as many as you can, and go out in the streets, chant, dance with harmonium and verdanga, cartels, and sing and dance. And this is a very good time of the year to do it. This is when people are out for their summer vacations and they are looking this way and that way. All they do is go to bars, they go to restaurants, they go to gathering places and they eat and then they talk and they, they look around. They don't really know what they're, what they're looking for. They just go out to enjoy something. But when they meet the devotees, they think, oh, here's something really nice. Maybe we should take part in this singing. So this is a little, and then of course, Lord Chaitanya says, oh, anyone who distributes this mercy, I can sit there, I can sit, I will become their servant. They, they become my master. This is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he's um, eager you know, to give this mercy to others. Okay, so I'll stop there. Remember this verse. And one remembers Lord Chaitanya, the easy things become, the difficult things become easy. The easy things, one who forgets him, the easy things become difficult. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, please, if you have any questions, uh, raise your hands or just uh, ask uh, directly Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, may I have uh, one, one question about this? Because uh, it's, uh, you mentioned that uh, whenever there is a need, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, 
gives uh, his mercy yeah, even more. There is extra mercy. And uh, I just uh, remember one time when I had some difficulty to understand something that uh, there was a devotee whom I felt uh, that uh, she was uh, criticizing a lot uh, other devotees. And still uh, she seemed to get so much mercy. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I, I understand that I, I really had a judging mood, which is not, not really good, but at that point, uh, I, I got to, to a point that it, uh, it made me question uh, some principles like, you know, the, the effect of uh, criticizing and this kind of stuff. And um, I, I understand that I cannot see whatever in, uh, is in other people's heart and uh, why yeah, the yeah, Lord... It. It's not so important. <laughs> Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, forget about yeah. it if, if you're if you're engaged in your own activities you don't notice all these things <laughs> yeah so i just had this feeling that uh, that uh, uh, we we need some how to say some some feedback about uh, our own spiritual practices and uh, and uh, i i i felt that uh, that um how to say uh, so so to see that um, uh, maybe I'm I'm uh, looking at my own spiritual life or other spiritual lives uh, other people's spiritual life and, and just just I would like to to get some feedback how things are working maybe it's it's bad I don't know because uh, I should uh, only see well, you, you you can't understand something like that because mm -hmm. you don't know because Krishna's you know, controlling the whole situation in the background. So he's giving or not giving accordingly. But there is a, if you want to talk about it in a material way, then there is a, a, a principle there. Um, if there is criticism coming and it's just mean-spirited criticism for no need, then um, there will be a reaction to that, no question about that. That's it. But you might you might not see the reaction, or you might then the reaction may not come immediately. But that person will get the reaction. There's no doubt. It just will come in due course of time. So what you're seeing is what's going on right now. But what ha what will happen in the future? You may not see that. Yeah, obviously, I, I, I don't desire this or something. It's just uh, really... Uh... Well, yeah, you're just trying to figure out how it works. But I'll give you the material example. Mm -hmm. Material example is that not, there are some real evil people out there. But from the material point of view, they got everything. They got wealth, they got power, they got prestige, they got followers. They seem to be enjoying all these things. But at the same time, they're committing so many sinful activities. So what they're, what they're doing is they're reaping the results of their good activities at the particular time. And now they're, they're planting the seeds for further suffering and the activities they're doing now. So those things will fructify in due course of time. Sometimes you see very nice people who are very generous and friendly, have many good qualities. And they're suffering. They're suffering materially, they might even be sick, so many things. And they're, they're getting the results of their previous bad karma at that time. And then now they will, they're planting the seeds for future good karma. Yeah, I see so you're trying to see things very linear. Well, she's doing this and she's getting this. Yeah, so you, you're just seeing in in a very limited way. Well, actually you're not seeing it all. You can't see the whole picture. And therefore, you're, if you judge it based on your observation, you will always be fall short of the understanding. Because in due course of time, whatever activities we perform, there will be a reaction to that accordingly. But it's not that it's gonna happen immediately. In many cases, it just doesn't. 
Yeah, I, I, I just uh, understood as, as uh, you were speaking that that's why it's much better to, to understand things uh, through the eyes of the scripture because there we can see the reasons, the, the results and everything. We get the full picture yeah. and uh, yeah. in, in our life we cannot. Yeah, it, it really makes sense. Uh, thank you very much. And how, how does it work when also the other, other part of it, I mean, uh, the other side of it, when, when uh, we feel that uh, we got uh, mercy of the Lord's uh, reciprocation, and sometimes it comes, sometimes it goes, but uh, uh, many times I feel that uh, uh, we feel lucky that, yeah, the, the Lord gave, gave us uh, some special mercy, and it means that I'm doing something good right now, or I deserve it. But yeah. uh, you should see like that, and then I'm getting some special mercy. But uh, as I, I, I suppose, we actually never uh, deserve it, or something. I, I, I think. You that think you deserve it, then you, then you, you're, you're, you're calculating materially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, what makes you think you deserve it? <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, uh, it's just lately I, I listened to a class when, um, uh, when the devotee spoke about that uh, sometimes people think that uh, if, if I have uh, uh, nice uh, material arrangements, then it means that the Lord favors me. And, uh, and obviously, at, at that are, something... there, are, there, are, there are groups that preach like that, mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily a... Uh, and Prabhupada talks about, he says, Krishna says, Prabhupada says he was an example for Krishna's mercy. And Prabhupada says, when Krishna favors you, he gives you everything. And when he really favors you, when he's special favor, he takes everything away. Mm -hmm. People don't like that. I said that uh, recently and somebody almost, you know, was about to ready to cry. <laughs> so... <laughs> Because, you know, they're attached to whatever they have. But they don't understand. When Krishna says, I take everything away, what does it mean? He leaves himself. Everything is gone with him. Then you're left with only Krishna. <laughs> yeah, but uh, then we have actually everything. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean... This part, uh, it's, I, I think it's easier to understand that uh, uh, Krishna's favor is uh, not, uh, uh, not like uh, we have something material, but sometimes it's, it's oh, more difficult yeah, yeah. to- Don't try to figure out how Krishna works. <laughs> just, be, just be thankful for whatever he gives you and be thankful for whatever he takes away. <laughs> okay, don't, I, worry. I, I don't calculate so much. You'll be all right. I'm sorry. I'm 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 so much like this analyzing type. So, <laughs> well, anal analyze the scriptures and try to understand deeper what is being said. <laughs> use that okay. uh, use that tendency for for some analyzation that will awaken higher knowledge. Now that kind of analyzation is good. Or analyze your own execution of devotional service and see where you are and see where you want to go. Okay, okay, I I, I will uh, try to do. Don't that. try to analyze how Krishna does things. <laughs> you can't figure. It out. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand it now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, it's okay. You're intelligent, but just make sure you direct it in the right way. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I have much. some good, I, 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 people, more people are asking me about this history of Kirtan thing that you compiled. I just got one yesterday from Jayadwaita Maharaj. He really loves it. So, oh. And I have to, I have to keep telling everyone that I didn't do it. <laughs> so you, you should know you're becoming famous. <laughs> you know it or not. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. It's, it's everything is by, by more, your mercy. I wouldn't be able to do anything. Well, anyway, whatever, wherever mercy it is, it's directed towards you. <laughs> So, you know, you should think, be thankful for that. 
many senior devotees, it's not just devotees in general, but senior devotees are really appreciating that that work you did. It was really quite fantastic. And when I delivered that, when I delivered that at the, the meeting, and the feedback was so positive, it was really good. Shiva Ram Maharaj really liked it. <laughs> and I mean, when Shiva Ram Maharaj likes something, and you know it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he, he has really high standards. That's Very for sure. Very high standards, yeah. So I didn't tell him that, you know, this, this, this Mataji from Hungary did it, you know. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I, I very much like this this kind of I'm I'm this uh, rich research type, so it was very uh, I really enjoyed doing this. I, well, there you go. There's where you can. That, there's a lot of research you can do. Mm -hmm. I'm with one devotee right now. He's he researches everything. <laughs> He's researching things that are the most amazing things. He was talking to me last night of what he's, what kind of research he's doing. Uh, you know, for instance, Bhakti, one of the things he's researching is that Bhakti Vinoda Kaur had sent this book called The Teachings and Precepts of Lord Chaitanya to many universities throughout the world in uh, 1896, which was the same year Srila Prabhupada appeared. And one of those copies appeared in one university in Canada, McGill University. And devotees had found it and showed Srila Prabhupada. So he's, he's, he's researching the, all the different uh, universities that uh, received the book. And Bhakti Vinoda Kaur also wrote a letter, kind of like introducing the book to people who would receive it at the university. So he's researching all these universities and trying to connect some more of that book with the history of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So that's, that's a nice research. Oh, amazing. It's quite remote, the stuff that he's looking for. It's hard to find. But... So there's an example, you know, how you could take something spiritual or something historical that happened in our movement and then just do a research on it. And that's a basis for, for a book. Research materials when, when, it's, when it's, you know, voluminous can turn into, you know, a book. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very inspiring. Yeah, so I'm um, I'm really re responding to your uh, your qualifications, and you can do some research. Yeah, I, I will think about it because uh, it really sounds in, in interesting and and inspiring. Thank you very mm -hmm. much for the encouragement. Yeah. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. He's all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you again for reminding us about the importance of Harinam Sankirtan and how this movement is meant to be spread by congregational chanting and dancing. So then should we take any and every opportunity we get to chant the holy name, whether it's a small gathering, big gathering, medium-sized gathering, whatever venue, whatever place, if you get a chance, should we just chant the holy names? Yeah. It's all, it benefits the chanter, mm -hmm. pleases the Lord, it benefits anyone who hears, and it purifies the atmosphere. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Very nice to hear this. I feel very encouraged. Now I'm going to go out and do it. Good. And when you come to Slovenia, we have a five-day kirtan program starting on the 27th. 
to the yeah. 31st, five full days. Oh, that so, sounds absolutely wonderful. Yeah, so get, get in shape. <laughs> Yes, Guru Maharaj, I will. I'm doing my push-ups now, right away. <laughs> Good, we're, we're eagerly awaiting your arrival. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I'm excited, very excited. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we'll stop here. I have another class coming up and we'll, uh, we're going to try to do the program tomorrow with the devotees from uh, Charlotte at 1.20 in the afternoon. I'm sorry, 12.20 in the afternoon UK time. So it'll be a special class on the glories of Lord Balaram on his appearance day. Mm -hmm. Jai Balaram Purnima ki Jai. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. So see you all tomorrow. 1220. Remember the time. UK time. 1220 UK time. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.